Jennifer Collins in Raleigh, North Carolina is a parent yeah. and she wants to know what is a good metric to use for my state or city to decide if school is a safe environment for my daughter and her peers. Um, do you think there are clear signs or numerical thresholds that make returning to school safe or not safe for a community? So, yes. I mean, so once again, I'm not a doctor, so I'm very careful. And that number might change, but I think anything, you know, if you, if you have more than 5% of a population, of a potentially infected population, so we try to get under 1%. If you've got more than 5%, it's going to be hard to convince me that that's going to be safe for a, for a community. So that's my number. Um, and in fact, I would, if I opened, I would advise a school to close if they start to see community spread, because schools don't live in isolation. But I don't think it's realistic to think that a single case should shut everything down. I think also what we have to remember is we are going to have to manage with this virus for a long, like until further notice. I don't know what to tell people. Like there's no end date at this stage. We don't have a vaccine yet. But we can do it. We can manage around it through the techniques that I described through, through healthy buildings, you know, circulation outside, de-densification, masking, all the tools that we have available to us um, that will make it safer for all of us uh, in the future. So that's how I think about metrics in terms of I've got an, a number in my head where I would be very uncomfortable bringing, bringing students together if the community is impacted, but also a realism that, you know, there will be cases. We got to figure out, you know, a school district has to figure out what, how, what are they going to do to contain that? That's why you're hearing about pods um, and, and, and um, skewed scheduling so that if there is, you know, the combination of masking, uh, six feet, so, you know, the social distancing, the um, uh, uh, um, uh, skewed schedules, uh, you know, plastic guards, no sports, all of those things combined, there's no silver bullet will bring the risk down to a suitable level. And this is, you know, I know it's, I mean, we seem dysfunctional now. The one good piece of news is like other countries have figured it out. They're not that much smarter than us. Like we can figure this out. Uh -huh. And to clarify, when you're talking about markers in the community of like a 5% or a 1%, are you referring to like the larger town community or the state? Or are you referring to the school community itself? I would do the school community. So I would do it county by county. So I could see... I could see, like for Massachusetts, for example, if I look at the numbers, I could see areas in the West, which don't have the kind of density, choosing a different path forward than Boston, which is going to have uh, challenges to de-densifying and has higher, um, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, higher infection rates um, or, or a place like, um, you know, some of our uh, more working class communities like Quincy that, really, that were really hit hard. Uh -huh. 